All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Yep. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So as promised today, I'm going to go over all that I know about scaling your insurance business, utilizing virtual assistants. Um, if you guys don't have VAs, you should really, really look into using VAs, not just for appointment setting, but for literally building an, an online audience. Um, you know, in the market today to compete online, it really requires a lot of any small business owner, especially uh, someone that's trying to grow their book of business in the insurance game. So what that means is we have so there's so much that needs to be done on a consistent basis for you to stand above the noise uh, of your competitors. And that's what I want to go over, how to do it cheaply, effectively, um, and, and in a way, in such a way that you can scale your business and keep adding more VAs and keep growing and keep pushing out more content and keep adding more appointment setters so that you can keep growing and growing and growing, okay? So, um, as I kind of mentioned earlier, this is kind of the, the overview of, of how we're going to do things tonight. Um, we're going to go over my part. Uh, we've got John Jonas speaking tonight, which is fantastic. Alex Branning, another brilliant marketer. Joey Turner, he, Joey Turner is, is my uh, marketing officer for A-Setters, and I'm so excited to have him uh, help me run this program and to market a setters because I really believe in what we're doing. Um, and then we're going to go over a little bit more and then we'll have a Q and a at the very end. That's optional. If you'd like to ask, ask questions, pick my brain. I'm more than happy to do so. Okay. All right. So I think most of you know me, but some of you may not know me. My name is Tim James. I'm the CEO of a setters. A Setters is a company that I've started about a year ago. And basically what I have done is I've trained appointment setters from the Philippines and I've turned them over to insurance agents to call warm leads, cold leads, to do non-voice campaigns, to help manage leads within their CRM system. Um, I've also done ad campaigns. I've trained VAs on uh, the, the calling aspects of those campaigns. So I have been um, doing this for uh, for quite a while. And before that, I was running a, a program called Medicare Appointment Setters. So I've helped over 500 insurance agents with all of these things. Um, I've probably, man, I, I, I wish I could put it to numbers. I've probably um, hired over 500 VAs um, since I've started, if not closer to 1,000. So I have really, I have learned a lot of, of, of things when it comes to hiring VAs and scaling with VAs, VAs. And I've also made a lot of mistakes and I wanna um, help you guys understand what the process looks like and um, how to do it effectively because there certainly is a right way and a wrong way of doing it, okay? So with A setters, what my vision is for my company and, and the way I like to implement things is I wanna train the VAs. I wanna find the VAs for you, right? And I wanna help you in that process of managing and growing your business with a VA. I want you to manage your VA. I, I, I believe, I firmly believe that the no one can run your business like you can. No one understands your vision like you do. OK, so so it's important to me that I help you with the process and show you all the steps along the way and how to do it and what not to do. But at the end of the day, you should be calling the shots and directing it. OK. So here's the here's the question. Why would someone want to use virtual assistants? Well, the first most glaring answer is it's a inexpensive solution to scale your business. You can hire top quality virtual assistants from, from anywhere between two and $5 per hour. Um, you, can, you can literally create a remote marketing team for the price of one US-based employee. So if you do it right and you understand the process of doing it, it can be the most fruitful thing that you do. Another thing is, is 
there are jobs that a lot of uh, U.S.-based employees won't take. You know, there's a lot of data entry jobs and, and mine uh uh, consuming jobs and, and mind grueling tasks that a lot of Americans just won't do. And if they will do it, it's for a really, really high price. Okay. And then lastly, this is a super easy process if you do it right. And that's what I want to show you is if you pair automation with your VAs and you're using a good system like Agent CRM, there's no reason, um, th there's nothing that can stop you. Because all of the counterpoints to using a VA, uh, any, any objection that I hear about it is, well, I don't have time to manage it. I can't stay on top of these employees. I'm a single agent trying to grow my business. Well, that's where automation comes in. Automation will come in and help delegate these tasks for you and keep things very, very simple and black and white for your VAs. And, and you can slowly start adding new tasks to the equation. Okay, so here's another, another reason why use VAs. You need someone to call your leads. I, I, I can't tell you how many agents that I see calling their leads once, twice, or three times and then giving up or never calling their leads to begin with. So there should never be a lead that is left behind. If, you're, if you don't have time to, to, to keep track of your leads and to contact your leads consistently and try to book appointments and call to actions and all this different stuff, you're, you're, you're wasting your ad spend. And it's literally the difference between an agent making $50,000 a year uh, or $150,000 a year. You know, I read a study the other day that said uh, something along the lines of it takes about 12 touches within the first 48 hours after a lead is generated for, the, for a person to actually respond to a phone call or text message. I don't create the marketing climate. I just know what the reality is. The reality is, is right now, especially if, you, especially if you're in Medicare, there is a lot of noise and you've got to be louder than that noise and you've got to be stronger, bigger and badder than your competitors, okay? Another thing that I want to really touch upon, which I think is super important is, your agency or, or you as an agent should be putting out content consistently. You, I mean, you should be doing posts every single day. You should be putting out videos. You should be uh, building an audience on YouTube, on TikTok, on all these different things. And you certainly, certainly want to um, work on your SEO game. You want to have visibility on the internet. Whether it's on a local level or a national level, when someone searches on Google insurance agents near me or best Medicare agent or, or anything like that, you want to come up on that first page, right? So, so that, that is a really, really important aspect. And I'm going to go into that a little bit further uh, in a couple of slides, but it's really, really important to start building your branding and your audience, right? Because if you're 100% dependent upon leads, what happens if the, the cost of leads go through the roof with Facebook ads? Or what happens if uh, you know, the, the market gets saturated? Then you're left with nothing. Or what if, you, what if you're buying leads and, and you get a bad batch of leads and you're going from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck, just purchasing age leads? It can literally sink you. So it's really, really important that you're thinking about your long-term goals as an insurance agent or agency, okay? So over here, I'm not gonna go too much into this, but this is the basic things that Google is looking for, right? Google is looking for your page speed. It's looking for um, how much content you're putting out consistently. It's looking for uh, uh, blogs. It's looking for uh, how many other credible websites are linking to your, your website. Yeah. All the, sorry, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to the next slide. Um, okay. So now let's talk about this. So the logical next question one would ask is, well, shouldn't I hire a marketing agency to do this? Okay. So I want to go over the difference between hiring your own marketing agency versus building your own in-house remote team. Okay. So here's a stat that I pulled up. Uh, from WebFX, the average cost for digital marketing services in 2022 
ranges from $2,500 to $12,000 per month, $50 to $500 per hour, and $1,000 to $7,500 per project for small business to mid-sized business. Okay, I don't know about you, but I certainly could not afford, I would not want to spend that money <laughs> on, on, a, on a marketing budget. I mean, I'd be, I, I would have to be getting a lot, a lot in return. And I'll tell you, one of the problems with marketing agencies is they are expecting to lose 80% of their clients. That is just the reality of running a marketing agency. It's a turn and churn game for them. And I've literally seen people get, get screwed over, throw all their money in, uh, to this big marketing agency that over promises everything. And then they're left with nothing. They manage too many clients. They, there's no way they can handle or give you the support that you need as an agent or a small agency. And they try to cram your business into a one size, uh, one size solution. And that does not work. There are marketing components that are universal that work, but it's not a one size fit all. Okay. So Let's move on to the next slide. And this is what I want to talk to you about with, with building a remote team. Now, I don't expect every agent here to, to go out and hire 10 VAs and start a remote marketing team. But what I do think is, is worthy of your time and what I do think is smart for you to do is to slowly build a, a, a remote team, okay? So the current rate for a VA is $3 per hour. With oversight and a clear marketing plan, you can do the exact same thing as a marketing team for a fraction of the cost. And not only can you do the same thing as a big marketing team, you can literally do it bigger, better, and better. Because now you've got two, three employees that are working around the clock, 40 hours, do it, only focusing on building your brand, setting appointments, and, and getting more insurance clients to you, okay? So you have the ability, as I said, to slowly build a team based off of your needs and budget. So that's the great thing about building a remote team. You can stop, you can start. You're not, you're not held by a contract. I mean, you can scale it as big as you want. And maybe after the busy season, you pull it back down. You have that ability. There's no shortage of people in the Philippines that are qualified, that are looking to work with you, okay? So here's an example. This is uh, an example of a five-person remote team that I would recommend to any small agent or agency to start with. So the first type of appointment center that you, the first thing that you need to focus on, if you don't have a lot of leads, you need to be generating leads. So an appointment center is probably a good place to start, okay? So this appointment center should, should have great dialect, great inflection, um, should be intelligent, should be able to hold the conversation, right? So starting there, you can have this appointment center dial your, your existing leads, your aged leads. You can have this appointment center cold call leads. So you can have this appointment center manage people's responses in, in, in social media channels. So having an appointment center that is cross-trained, that's sole purpose is to book appointments for you is, is worthy of your time. And there are people on this call right now that have gotten 10, 20, 30 appointment centers from my agency, and they can attest to that. So now let's talk about scaling out. Let's talk about addressing the other components about like building your brand, uh, pushing out content, right? All that stuff, all the stuff that is needed to make a splash in the online online world. Okay, so I always recommend finding what I call a foundational VA. Okay, I've I've had a few of these VAs, and these are are VAs that are like superstars. These VAs have experience; they understand things; they're intelligent. They, they can help manage and they can help grow. And that's the type of VA that you want to start with. You want a VA that is on your team, that is ready to, uh, to help manage your team and help uh, kind of delegate your, your task, right? So a foundational VA is where you want to start. And that VA, you may want to pay a little bit more. You may want to pay five, $6 an hour if it's the right person, right? Then you want to start looking at someone that can help with your content creation, right? You go onto a website like onlinejobs.ph and you can literally find people that have um, 
that have portfolios that are just amazing based out of the Philippines that can do videos, that can do uh, graphic design, and they can take what you have and make it look fantastic and publish it to websites, right? Another thing that you want to look for is someone that's, that has a strong command, which that's ironic that I misspelled command, <laughs> but you want someone with a strong command of the English language that can help write content. content. So whether it be through blogging, websites, social media posting, ads, and, and all of the above, right? So, so you need someone that can, that can handle that because you should be pushing out content consistently, just like a fire, and it should be good content. And there are tools. There's a tool right now called Jasper AI, and that tool, you, you can literally take what has been written, plug it in there, and automation will rewrite it. Look at the keywords that you're you're going after. Look at the, the hashtags that you're going after, and we'll optimize that content so that you can always be publishing content that's going to get more eyes towards you, you or your agency, okay? So also website builder, someone that can help with your with building websites, maintaining your website, uh, managing your website, SEO, all of this stuff. Um, you need someone that can do it quickly because you might want to start a funnel. You might want to move to, hey, I want to start doing an ACA campaign. Hey, I want to start uh, focusing on final expense. Hey, I want to go back to Medicare. Someone that can quickly build professional looking websites that are optimized to be uh, viewed in a Google search. Okay. All right. So Here's another thing, appointment setting. We've already went through this. Appointment setting, cold calling, warm calling, inbound, and non-voice appointment setting. Um, that's essential for any insurance agent. We went through this uh, website building and management, content creation, uh, videos, graphics, posts. Um, you know, you really should be taking advantage of all of these social media platforms. Um, and then on top of that, you can have your VAs do really, really fantastic things. I want to give you an example of a VA that I had um, that was taking direct mail leads, editing them, the, the leads and putting them into the automation that went out to, to clients and it would shoot out all of that information all in, in one fell swoop. You know, just little things like that. Things that would take hours and hours and hours of your time that would deter you from doing what you should be doing, which is closing more insurance deals. Okay, so I wanna quickly, we're, we're gonna get through the next two slides and then I believe we have a speaker coming on. But so here's a question I often get from, from uh, potential clients and clients. What should my marketing budget be? Okay, so you need to be you need to find a lead source that provides you with at least an ROI of, of five times the amount you put in, right? That's important. That's that's on a low end, at least five time ROI, right? Now, your next thing is um, your annual marketing budget should be at least 20% of what you would like to earn annually. So to do quick math, because I'm horrible at doing math in my head, if you want to earn 200 k for your upcoming year, your marketing budget should be at least 40K annually or 3K per month. That is just a general rule of thumb for your marketing budget. Now, this is a, this is a great rule and I hope you guys apply this rule in your marketing budget. The 2080 flip rule. What that means is 20% in the beginning stages of, of, of building your brand and your agency and, and growing, 20% of your marketing budget should go towards your long-term goals. So that includes branding, SEO, social media presence, and building an audience. This is going to be your foundation, okay? 80% of your marketing budget should go towards your short-term strategy. So heavy lead acquisition, this is your Facebook ads, your direct mail, your appointment setters, all the stuff that's literally bringing business in the door. After five years, if you do this consistently and correctly, you should then be able to switch your marketing efforts to 80% branding and 20% acquisition. You'll literally have leads coming in on autopilot for next to nothing. All right, so I want to re-emphasize the importance of branding and audience building, okay? Most agents that I see, they're just going from lead to lead, and that's 
That's all it is. But I promise you, if all you're doing is lead acquisition in the short term, it's going to screw you over in the long term. There are changes. There are, there are changes that happen constantly with these social media websites that you're you're advertising on. There are <clears throat> there are changes with direct mail. We've seen the decrease uh, in the return rate with, of direct mail. Your brand is your retirement pension. I, 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 I want to stress this again. Your brand is your retirement pension. I get most of my calls, the, the sales that I make is organic and it's because of my branding. And I can, I can sleep. I can go from day to day and not worry about the, the next sale or where the next, you know, the next five sales are coming from. It's super important. All right, let me just, so miscon misconceptions de debunked, okay? So here are the common things I hear when people say, oh, I, you know, I, I don't know about using a VA from, from overseas. Low wage is exploited, right? Not true, eh, not true, okay? $1 per hour in the Philippines is the equivalent of what someone at a fast food restaurant in America makes, $3 per hour right, at a starting rate is enough to sustain a small family. You can pay your VA whatever you want. I, I always recommend uh, doing incentivized bonuses, but I literally have uh, appointment setters that are making more money than appointment setters in the United States because they're doing such a good job. So, so that's debunked, right, unsafe or illegal. I mean, it's unsafe if you're handing your credit card to people, <laughs> but but with systems in place and, and all the software we're going to go over, it's completely fine. And as long as you are, uh, you know, filing your taxes correctly, there's nothing illegal or wrong with outsourcing. Quality is poor. When I hear the term quality is poor, you know what that tells me? It means that the, some, someone failed in the application process, in the screening and hiring process, or someone is not managing or delegating their tasks to their VA correctly, because I have seen nothing but fantastic work ethic from, from, from people in the Philippines. Literally, there are, there are girls in the Philippines that work for me that, I, that would run circles over most US-based applicants. So that, that is a, a common misconception. It's just not true. You just have to find the right VA. All right, and then the last one that I'm gonna go over, I don't have time to manage my own VA. Okay, that's, that's a reasonable response. I, I get it. Most insurance agents, they're out just trying to, trying to make sales and, and that's all they can do. But I'm, that's why a company like A-Setters is here. We're here to help you and hold your hand in the process of growing your business. So what that means is when we have someone come on for our appointment setting program, we are, we are in their group chats, the, you are paying the VA directly, uh, they, you are directing the VA. However, we are there to support you and make sure that everything is working correctly. All of our VAs are completely trained and ready to go. So you eliminate the training process, you eliminate the scaling process. Now, all you literally have to do is communicate with your VA. That's it. Communicate, manage your VA. Hey, I need you to do this, this today. Can you call this list for me today? Can you do that for me today? If you don't have time to just direct a VA, then I don't know what I, what I can do because the benefits of this outweigh the, the you know five to 10 minutes that you would have to spend uh, overseeing an employee, right? So I'm going to stop right here. Looks like we got Mr. John Jonas on. So let me uh, stop sharing my screen. I want to introduce you guys to John Jonas. John Jonas is the founder and operator of onlinejobs.ph. He is like the godfather of VAs and uh, I'm so excited to have him on this meeting. I, I feel like I'm going to learn a lot. John, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Hold I'm on. Not, let me I'm not really you. sure what else there is to say, dude. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to you for the last 15 minutes and it's pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Well, what, what is, how did you start online jobs and, and what, what was your thought, thought process behind it? 
Yeah. So when I started hiring people in the Philippines and, and so I'll call them VAs for now. Uh, I think, you know, that I have a different word for them just because of what people, people perceive a VA as a secretary and most people don't want a secretary. You want someone who's really, really good at something. But when I started hiring people, this was 2005 and they sucked. Like they, they weren't very good at things. Um, there weren't skills then. I mean, there were some, but um, like the first person I hired, he didn't really know anything other than he spoke really good English. And it turned out there was a whole bunch of other cultural things that I didn't understand at the time about the Philippines that are really, really good. Like that guy still works for me today. I hired him in 2005. And for a small business owner, like that's a really big deal to have loyalty, which Filipinos are super duper loyal. So after a couple of years of using this agency, which the, it was the only agency I knew of at the time, and it was really, really hard. Uh, I just decided like, there's gotta be a better way than these people are so dumb. Um, they were so bad at it. Like I've seen what you do and you're good at it. They were so bad at it. And I was, I was just like, there's gotta be a better way. I think I can like build this website and maybe get a couple hundred profiles into my, into my own job board so I could hire someone. And, and I, so I, I went to the agency and said, Hey, I want a programmer. And they were like, okay, here you go. And that guy, that guy's also still with me. Um, that was 2007. And um, we built online jobs.ph and it, we're approaching 2 million profiles today and we've got hundreds of thousands of employers use it. And that's where, that's where it came from. So. That's awesome. How, how, how many VAs do you use just for running your company? Yeah. So I have about 40 full-time people in the Philippines that work for me. So online jobs is an eight figure business. Um, I have me and my business partner, He's in Idaho, I'm in Utah, and then we have 40 people in the Philippines, and that's it. That's all of it. And me and my partner both, both work less than 20 hours a week. It's just all these people in the Philippines that, that do such a dang good job of running it. So, do you, have, uh, do you have people from the Philippines managing your other people from the Philippines? Tell me about how that works. Yeah, so, okay, so... For most people listening to this, that management is relevant down the road. The first thing you should do is hire, hire one person. Like, like you said, hire that, hire that virtual assistant, someone who's gonna, who's gonna be your right head man. Like that's so dang effective. And especially if you can have them doing things that you know how to do, like, hey, I need you to do this. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, here's some instructions. It'll take you five minutes to create instructions. Like that's so doable. And then they're doing something for you that would have taken you an hour, right? Um, so when I, the first people I hired, I just hired them to do some single thing. And then I managed them. Over time, uh, as their jobs progressed, I had, they just told me like, hey, I need help. I, I'm doing too much here. Like social media, for example. She was like, I, I'm, I have too much here. There's, there's so much that, that we can and should be doing that there's not enough for me. And I was like, great, hire someone else. And so she came to me with a couple of people and I, we kind of went through it together and she hired someone. To, and so she starts managing that person. A little while later, she did it again. She hired someone else. So that's how I built most of, most of our teams. They've, they've helped me to build the team. So like social media, or content creation or um, customer service, they've all helped build those teams. I built our programming and our web team and I still manage a lot of that. But that first guy that, that I hired, his name's Joven. Um, recently I made him the manager of onlinejobs.ph. So like he's, he's not running our software, he's not, but he's managing so much of it, which is so, so cool. And so he's like now managing the programmers and, and the designers and the web people. And he's also overseeing like content creation. And so, yeah, totally, totally doable. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what advice would you give? Um, I mean, I, obviously we, we heard the advice, start with that one foundational VA, right? 
But what would you, you know, there have, there's probably agents here that have had VAs and have not had luck with it and they've gotten discouraged. What would be like your, hey, don't give up <laughs> approach? Okay. So I have a couple things. Um, the first thing is, so that first foundational VA, it doesn't actually need to be a VA. And uh, so I'll go back to what I started saying in the beginning was I don't call them VAs anymore. I call them OFS, online Filipino specialists, because I'm not hiring VAs. Like I'm hiring a programmer who's really dang good at programming, or I'm hiring a social media manager who knows how to manage social media and they're good at it and I don't, right? However, what I recommend for most people, what I recommend for everyone basically is to the first person you hire should be someone to do something that you know how to do. So you're going to teach this person how to do whatever it is that you're going to have them do. And you have things. I, everybody's like, oh, I'm the one who needs to do. No, you know, you don't need to. You're not the one who needs to be doing all this stuff. There are things in your business that you do that someone else could do. And that's when you know that you're ready to hire someone is when you have something that you could teach someone else to do. So um, when you get frustrated with, oh, I've had someone before and they're not working out. Well, did you hire them to do something you don't know how to do? Or did you hire them to do something you do know how to do? Because typically when you hire them to do something you know how to do, you know exactly what you're looking for when you hire them. You know what to say when you post your job. You know what questions to ask when you interview. You know what the outcomes look like. You know how to train. It just, the whole thing gets so much easier when you approach it that way. And then like one of your points that you made was I'm too busy to manage a VA. Yeah, that's because you haven't hired someone yet, <laughs> right? Like once you hire someone and you hire them to do things that that you do, well, you're not as busy. And, and you start to think like, oh, I have to do this. Wait a minute, I don't have to do that. I could hand that off to someone else. And there's three hours that I'm not gonna spend. And maybe it takes them 12 hours right? I don't care. You know, like my three hours are worth $15,000. Their three hours are worth, or their 12 hours, are, I don't know, their 12 hours are worth 30 bucks. I don't know what it is, right? Uh, 50 bucks. Um, yeah. So like you don't have time. That's because you haven't hired someone yet. And you haven't hired someone to get things off of your plate. So many people take the wrong approach with this. They're like, oh, I just want to hire someone to build my website for me. Because I don't know how to do that. Well, that's fine, but you're hiring yourself a management job in addition to what you're currently doing. And you're already doing too much and you're already overwhelmed. And so that's that's my first like big tip. That That's like, oh, you tried this before? Well, did you go to the Philippines, number one? Did you hire them to do something you know how to do? I guess the next thing is, did you train them? Did you provide training to that person. And some of you are going to say, yes, yes, and yes, I did all those three things. Go try it again. Like if you hired, so, sometimes people just hire a dud, but man, every single day I get people that come to me and say, I got super lucky with my VA. <laughs> They're amazing. I got super lucky though. No, you didn't get lucky. You did it right. Like you, you went, you went the right path and did it right. You know, I got super lucky. In 2005, when I hired this first person, I had no idea the Philippines was different. You know, I, I didn't know. I would just, I was following someone else's advice and I got super lucky. Yeah, you're not getting super lucky when you hire someone amazing. <laughs> I love that. So, so what about, and I don't want to take up too much of your time, John, but I very much appreciate you being on here. Um, so one of the issues that I, I hear a lot is, um, you put a lot of trust and faith in, in, in one employee and they're over other employees. And then all of a sudden that employee, something happens and then everything crumbles. How, what is your remedy to keeping all of that intact? All right. So I have a couple of things. Number one, Filipinos are super loyal. And that makes all the difference in the world for a small business owner, because I suck at creating SOPs. Like, I don't want to create standard operating procedures. I don't want to create manuals. I'm terrible at it. But that first person I ever hired still works for me today. And that programmer that I hired in 2007 still works for me today. And the content writer that I hired in 2009 still works for me today. So that's that's one piece of this. How do you, how do you prevent that? Number, number two. So in order for that to happen, you have to treat them well. 
in the Philippines, it man how you manage people makes a hundred percent difference on their loyalty. So if you're crappy and you treat them crappily and you have super high expectations and have no tolerance for mistakes or you have you're not interested in them as a person, yeah, it's not gonna work. Like it's not gonna work for you like it does for me. Right. So that that's one thing. Like you have to be a reasonable manager of people. They're human beings and that's a big deal. Um next um I have my people in the Philippines create manuals for me. So like I teach them something, they don't do it right. I teach it again, they don't do it right. Uh, I teach more of it, they get it better. We, teach, we go back and forth a whole bunch of times until they get it right. And once they get it right, then I've created like 10 different training videos of how to do this, which by the way, creating a training video is so stinking simple. Yeah. You open up, I don't, know what, I don't know what you use. I use Snagit, you can use Loom. You use tiny take, whatever it is. You just record your screen, your voice, your mouth. However long it takes you to talk through that process is how long it takes you to create the training, which is super simple. So at this point, I've created five or 10 videos. They're doing it. And now I say, hey, will you make a, a standard operating procedure out of this? Like in a Google Doc or whatever it is, include all of my videos so someone in the future can watch them too. But I want you to write what you understand about it how good you are at it, right? Like now they're creating the, the standard operating procedures and it's in Google Docs or it's in our base camp or it's in both. And so that that's a good way to prevent like, oh, you lost that one person and everything crashes. Well, I've never lost that person. So, and, and I'm not saying that that's gonna be magic for everybody, right? Cause that's a silly thing to say, but when you, yeah, those are, those are some, some of my advice. All right, I got one last question. I promise. All right, no, you're so, good. I got, I got till five. I got. It's four forty. I got till five o'clock. If you want. Oh, fantastic! That's great. Okay, so now let me ask you this because I get this question a lot, and I know I'm sure you get this question a lot. But uh, how? What is your recommendation for uh, uh, bonuses and and increasing pay rate? I know it's different for different industries, right? But generally. I, I, one of the mistakes I've seen, John, is people throw, they, they do raises way too quickly and it doesn't really change the result of anything. Does that sound right to you? Okay. So I'm going to say something that you may or may not agree with. I don't know. What I have seen in the Philippines is they do not work well generally under a, they don't work well under pressure. And a proposed commission bonus structure to them is pressure. Like it makes them worry if they don't, if they, so I'm gonna pay you this much. And if you do this, then I'm gonna get you this. And if you do that, then you're gonna pay, make this much or whatever, right? So for most people in the Philippines, that kind of bonus structure is a disincentive. Because instead of saying, oh, if I work like this and I do this, that's not how they think. They think, oh, if I don't hit this, then he's going to be mad at me and then he's going to fire me and then he's going to yell at me. And so that's that's a real concern. Um, so I tried that in the beginning. It did not work. Um, I have given large raises to people only because I, not because it was going to improve their work because it doesn't. I've given large raises to people because I wanted to reward them because they were amazing, right? So like one of my guys, I doubled his salary one day. You're so dang good. And I value you so much that I'm doubling your salary, right? Um, but his output didn't change. It didn't change anything for me, right? Other than my cost to him. But I, I love this guy. And so I want to take care of him. So there's, there's something to consider. Generally, for most people, we do a raise once a year. It's like $25 to $50 a month because we pay a salary. Um, we don't pay hourly. We pay salary. Um, and then occasionally we'll send bonuses like, hey, you did a really good job. Here's the next $100, um, something like that. And what I've found in the Philippines is what they really want is they want stability and they want someone 
they just thrive on making someone happy. And they know that, that you're happy by the way you treat them, by you telling them, thank you so much, you're amazing. Um, or you suck, you did this thing. It was like the worst thing you can do for a VA in the Philippines. Um, so that's, that's, that's my advice. 100%. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, it's, 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 yeah, they are not driven by money like, like we are in, in, in America. They're just not, they, uh, they're really, their, their culture is just, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, I think, uh, I think, I think you really hit the nail on the head. Now, let me ask you one other thing. What about tracking and productivity? What do you recommend there, John? I don't do it. You don't do it. Yeah. So at onlinejobs.ph, we developed a, a time tracker. It's called Time Proof. And it sits open on their computer and it takes random screenshots and they turn it on when they start to work and they turn it off when they're done and it tells you their time and you can track it that way and you can look at all their screenshots and whatever. I hate it. They hate it. Um, what, what I've done is like, and, and this has always worked. Um, I hire you. I, I've given you some work to do. Oh, you did it. Sweet. I know I, I have a pretty good idea of how productive you are you know? And so when your productivity drops, like I know either, either I know that you're not working or I, I know something's going on. Like I can see your productivity. And so that's when I say something like, Hey, what's going on? Your productivity is not there. You know? Um, and, and I just, I think that's a lot better way to run a relationship than saying, Hey, you you know, whatever the accusatory, your time, whatever. The other side of it is, man, Filipinos don't want to disappoint you. And so if they are worried about disappointing you, number one, they're, you'll never have someone time track eight hours a day. That'll never happen because they do not want you to ever see anything that might be construed as being odd. So like when they check their email, they'll stop it. When someone comes into the room, they'll stop it, right? It's just, I've never seen it track eight hours. Um, so then if they, if they are not working, if their productivity actually drops, like they're not, like they've got another job and they're cheating you or whatever, then they're going to find ways to cheat your, your time tracker. And then you're just time tracking nothing and that's silly so then i i just want to know like how's your actual productivity so there's there's my there's my the way i handle it very true yeah we had a we tried the time tracker thing and uh we had a girl that had like a productivity of like 60 percent, and then all of a sudden it shot up to like 99.9 percent, .9 and she had some software that was just clicking yeah. <laughs> over and over and over yeah, which yeah. was just funny but uh okay so um now, we have a lot of people in here that are using um, uh, Go High Level CRM. Are you familiar with that at all? No, but but I know what I mean. I know what a CRM is and does. Yeah, yeah. So, what would you say um, if 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 a VA if a agent wanted to go onto OnlineJobs.ph and find someone that could help manage their CRM? What, what would they look for? What, what would you feel like they should be looking for? Okay, tell me what the name of it is again. Go high go, level? Go high level. Is that all one word? Yep, all one word. Okay, so I just went to onlinejobs.ph and I searched go high level. All one word. G-O-H-I-G-H-L-E-V-E-L, -E -E right? Yep. 256 results. <laughs> of people who have said who have the word go high level in their profile right and this is so let me just all right so let me just uh let me share my screen real quick oh let me you have permission can i share my screen yeah so i'll just show you guys this all right so you can see this i just searched onlinejobs.ph and you're looking at my browser that has my backpacking stuff on it and my one VA away and whatever. Um, go high level, first person project management, GHL customer support transcription, 
she's asking for a ton of money, $1,500 a month, 20 years of experience though. Like that's pretty crazy, right? Digital <laughs> marketing, specializing in Facebook ads, somewhere in his profile, it says go high level, right? Um, general, mar general virtual assistant, digital marketer, like these, these people are like high level people, super yeah. duper expensive from online job. Wow. Every one of them is expensive. That's not legit. Something's wrong there. No, maybe not. Three is a virtual assistant. Whoops. I didn't mean to click that, but I'll show you guys. Like super duper cheap. That's too low. Um, that's you, You're not going to hire someone at $2 an hour. That's not, it's not reasonable right now. Um, but you can see what he says. Tools I know. Microsoft Office, Google Apps, WordPress, Web Hosting Manager, Trello, Go High Level. I'm not sure what that was. It's blurred out because I'm not logged in. Um, so like the guy, you know, the guy's pretty reasonable, right? So what I, what I would say is you want, you want someone that to manage your CRM. Cool. You're using go high level, go search for go high level. You're using something else. Search that thing on onlinejobs.ph. There's almost 2 million profiles there. Someone there knows your thing, right? But more important than that, when I want to find someone, like if I was man, if I wanted someone to manage my CRM, I don't care what the software is because software is easy to learn to use. Like you learn to use this thing, right? You could make a video explaining that piece of it that you want them to learn. That'll take you 20 minutes. More importantly to me, I want to know how is this person's English? I want to know what's their attention to detail. I want to know how well do they communicate with me? Do I like working with them? Do we get along? Does their personality fit? Um, I want to know, are they going to show up every day? And I get all of these things as I interview someone, right? And so I'm less concerned with their skill than I am with, did you respond twice a day? Or did, you, did it take you three days to respond when, when I interview you, right? Because that sucks. Or if I ask you four questions in an email, do you respond to three of them and ignore one? Because that probably means when I give you four tasks, you're going to ignore one of them, right? That sucks. Um, or like, is your profile description consistent with what you're saying in your emails is more important to me than how skilled you are with go high level, right? So when, I, when I'm looking to hire someone, that's more important to me than the actual software piece that you understand because the software piece can be learned. Like go high level, I'm sure has training on how to use it, right? Send them the training of go high level. It'll take them one day, right? right? Awesome. Yep. Great response. Great response. All right, John, I think we're going to move on to the next person, but I, I really appreciate you coming here. Uh, I it, it means so much to me. And, and I know that that has uh, certainly helped a lot of people on this call. And I, I hope to be in touch with you soon, my friend. Hey, thanks, man. So let me let me put in two plugs really quick. Okay. So first, I don't know if people in here are using you, but you, so onlinejobs.ph has I don't even know how many active employers right now, like, I don't know, more than 10,000 active employers right now. We have never, ever referred people elsewhere. You're the first person I ever referred someone to outside of online jobs um, because I liked your process. I really liked how you hire. Um, and so if people are interested in like, an appointment setter, like you're the one that I, you're the one that I send people to, right? So that's, there's, there's one plug. I don't know who, I don't know who's on this, on this webinar, right? But um, that's one. The second thing is it, like, if, if you're interested in, in more than just appointment setters, if you're interested in using onlinejobs.ph, but you're not sure you've never hired someone before, onevaaway.com is mine. Um, I created it to, show you exactly how I hire someone, like how I weed out the good from the bad, what I'm looking for, how I do my job post, how I weed people out in the job post, the whole thing. That's available at onevaaway.com and it should make it super easy and it should make it so that it doesn't take you very much time to hire someone great. So there you go. All right. Thank you so much, John. Thanks, man. All Talk right. Hey, Bye. go see that family. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to move on to the next speaker. 
Uh, is he here? Do we have do we have a Mr. Branning on the call? He may be coming late. So let's move on to Mr. Joey. Joey, would you like to speak? Sure, sure. All right, guys. So let me first of all, let me see if you guys can see me. There we go. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, I'm going to be talking about the 20 percent that Tim mentioned. Tim, can you let me know if my screen's showing up? It is. Perfect. So I'm going to be talking about the 20 percent that Tim was speaking about earlier. So you have this 80-20 rule between your organic and your paid advertising. Now, before I get into it, I want to tell you guys a little bit about me. So I got my first sales job as soon as I graduated high school, within six months. That was in 2009. Uh, my first marketing job just about a year later for a local car dealership. I was a regional sales leader with a company called Car Toys, number three in the company from 2014 to 2019, with over $3 million in personal sales. And I've been a top producing Medicare agent since 2019. I've had a team of as many as 50 plus agents and I can personally write three to five apps every day I go out. So just a little bit about me. I've been in the sales and marketing game for over a decade. I do have a little bit of experience with this uh, as well as with the technical stuff. And, uh, and one thing before I go into my presentation, one thing Tim didn't touch on too much that I'd like to touch on is using these VAs to maintain your book of business has been huge for me. So I have a relatively small book of business, uh, just a few hundred clients, and we all know it's harder to keep them than it is to get them. And what I've used my VAs for when they're not calling my leads, when they're not prospecting for me, is following up with my existing customers, setting up the automations to send uh, birthday messages, to send out uh, retention letters, and really keeping in track and hitting those touch points throughout the year with the people who I've already gotten. Uh, and that's been huge for me. That made a, a massive difference for me, especially around this time of year. Um, I'm a Medicare guy myself, so AEP is crazy for me. And to not have to do so much work with the prospecting, just that little extra bit of help where you get your, your appointments with your existing clients booked for you so you know how many reviews you have before you have to actually get out there and put the work in is massive. So for that reason alone, a VA is so powerful for an insurance agent. Now, Tim, uh, I see Alex is here and I know he had an expected time slot. So why don't we let him hop on? Cause I haven't even started and then I'll come back after him. Uh oh, Tim, can you hear me? Oh. Hey, what's up, everyone? I see Tim here. Uh, Tim, feel free to uh, jump in when you want and uh, if he's not available, uh, Joey, you and I can chat as well. Um, of course, of course. I brought some uh, right on, right on. Hey, hey, Tim's here, right <laughs> on, right that. on. All right. No worries, no worries. I see so many faces in here that I know it's so fun to see a lot of old friends on this webinar. So thank you for inviting me, Tim. It's an honor to be a guest on this uh, panel of rock stars that you have in the room. So um, yeah, so. Uh, go ahead, Tim. How, how can I how can I serve your panel? I've got some things to talk about, but is there a specific direction you'd like me to go? Well, I just I I, I would like to. Me and Alex have uh, known each other for what close to a year now, somewhere around there. Yep. And uh, Alex, honestly, that guy, you have a mind of a marketer, and I love what you're doing. And the thing that I love about Alex is Alex really wants to empower insurance agents with his CRM, with his marketing messages. And I love that. That was one of the, the first things that me and Alex talked about. He hates lead vendors. I hate lead vendors. I think they're a waste of time, a waste of money. I think insurance agents can learn and do what we do. Right. And so, so Alex, yep. I want to ask you, how do you, you utilize virtual assistants in your actual business yeah 
Well, um, and thank you for the kind words. Virtual assistants have not only given me freedom in my life, but they have added revenue to my business. One of the things that um, I was encouraged to do by a business coach a couple of years ago was look at every task that comes across my desk and ask myself, what do I have to do so that I never have to do this task again? That way, I'm only focused on the revenue producing activities in my business, right? And for me, as somebody who runs a software and coaching company, the revenue producing activities for me is if I'm working on my marketing, if I'm investing my capital, and if I'm running workshops and the like. Everything else I look at and say, how can I delegate this to somebody else on my team? So the branding group right now, we have a team of 27 people. Now, they're not all virtual assistants, but many of them serve a key role and they are remote. They were brought on as a virtual assistant for a specific task. When I bring on a virtual assistant, again, I, I look at the tasks that come across my desk and I say, what do I have to do so that I never have to do this again? And I know Joe is going to talk a lot about prospecting and things like that. So I'll stay out of that realm and I'll focus on more of the day-to-day -day administrative and marketing side. For me, I like to look at every aspect of my business and say, I want to find somebody who can do this so I don't have to, and so they can do it better than me. And so Tim has set me up with two amazing team, uh, team members from A-Setters that do a phenomenal job um, with their specific roles that they have. And uh, one of them, her name is Kathleen. I'll brag on her for a second because uh, she was the first person that, that Tim brought into the branding group. And Kathleen uh, does a phenomenal job of calling every single person who signs up for Agent CRM. So all of you on the call right now, after you sign up for Agent CRM, you'll hear from Kathleen tomorrow. And she'll call and she'll say, hey, I'm Kathleen. I'm from Agent CRM. Um, I just want to make sure that you've got everything you need. And she does a great job of onboarding clients. In my opinion, after listening to her calls, she does almost as better job than I would do. Because in my mind, I've got other things that are on my plate. And so, but in her mind, she's like, this is the only thing I'm doing. So she's completely devoted to it, which by the way, is key. A lot of your, like one of the things about virtual assistants is they're not trying to multitask. They're just doing the one thing and they're doing it to excellence, which is like, as with an entrepreneurial mind, we're always looking at the next thing that we have to do, right? But for the virtual assistant, they're key. They're focused in on that one thing and they're focused in on doing it really well. Um, but so she does that. and then. She has a checklist of things to do after that welcome call. And so she does the job better than I do on the initial call. And she came up with her own list of things to do after the call. So she's even more thorough than I even dreamed of for that one specific task. And that has helped us out so much in retention of our clients and making our clients feel valued, feel seen. And they know that they've got someone, Kathleen, who is taking notes on how they can use the software to the very best in their in their specific business. So what I would encourage you to do if you're on this call right now and you don't have a virtual assistant, number one, set up a call with Tim on a one-to-one -one call so he can help you. Number two, look at the tasks that you do tomorrow. Literally take out a notepad. This is what I started doing. Take out a notepad, everything that you, you do during the day, write it down and then ask yourself, what do I have to do so that I never have to do this task again? Now, some of the things that you do tomorrow will be revenue producing activities that you want to continue doing, right? When you're running the sales appointments, things like that, right? But there's a lot of stuff that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that we don't have to do, right? We can offload that work. We can give it to a virtual assistant. We can delegate that. And so that's one of the things that has really changed the game for me. And so um, I'll throw out some numbers because I think it's really fun to hear numbers uh, from, from like real quote unquote entrepreneurs. So when I started, um, when I hired my very first virtual assistant, uh, it was just me seven years ago. And I hired a virtual assistant for two hours a day. That's it, Tim. That's all I felt confident enough to afford was two hours a day for a virtual assistant and five dollars an hour. I was like, I, I can afford, you know, it was ten dollars a day. I can afford fifty dollars a week. Right. Um, and I noticed an almost immediate increase in revenue. Why? It wasn't because of the work that the virtual assistant was doing because she wasn't doing revenue producing activity. The two hours of work that she was doing allowed me to focus two extra hours per day on revenue producing activity, right? And so then, you know, I started increasing her hours, giving her more tasks, bringing on more people. Now, every single day, I work about eight hours a day and I have 26 people working 
eight hours a day now that I've grown my team. The the multiplication of time is just this crazy uh, number. I can't even do the math in my head right now, but it's an amazing amount of productivity, but it started with me being brave enough to bring on a virtual assistant part-time. Now, for those of you that are on this call that don't have a virtual assistant, don't make the same mistake I did and just go for two hours. Use one of Tim's people part-time four hours a day so that they can do the work with you. But the key was for me just to get started on a small scale that I felt comfortable doing. It was the small step that led me to the big step, right? So the second number that I want to share with you is simply the number of tasks that you can delegate. Um, when I first started uh, bringing on virtual assistants, I was doing everything in my business. Now, out of the number of tasks that I do per day, I think I have maybe 10 things in my business that I handle personally. All the other hundreds of tasks, you know, some small, some big, are all done by other members of my team. That's great, man. So, so let me ask you something, Alex. When you first started, and you first started with a VA, how hard was it for you to let go of trying to trying to control every every little task? Was that was that uh, a, a hard uh, thing to do? It was. It was very hard in the beginning because I had this uh, this false belief that I was the only person that could do it. Right? It was like if I don't do it, it's not going to get done to excellence. Well, the actually, in my opinion, the opposite is true. That's what I'm learning as I bring on more all stars. The opposite is true because I'm always trying to do multiple things. Right? I'm a, I was a multitasker. I didn't have that focus. And so like, for example, I would, you know, I would write an email out and it would be like, I would look at my inbox and go, oh my gosh, I have a hundred emails I need to respond to between now and the end of the day tomorrow. I better hurry up and get through this, right? Because I had so many other things to do. But now that I have a virtual assistant, you know, they're going through emails, responding to the ones that they know how to respond to. And they're doing it with such thoroughness, so much detail that it's even better than I would have been able to do it. So, but yeah, that is a very difficult limiting belief to overcome is that I'm the only person that can do this. Right, 100%. And, and, I, and that's really, I mean, the objective. I mean, the whole point, right, is yes, we're doing a great thing. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're growing our business and we're, we're helping out people in, in a different country, right? And we're, we're, it's, it's a great symbiotic relationship. But the whole point of this is so that you can stop being plateauing right at that, yeah. that place where hey I, I've got to do everything and I'm stuck right here and start stepping into being a CEO and start stepping into to allowing other people to help lift you up and grow and then what's cool about that and you know I've I, I, I manage a bunch of VAs just for my own team is you get to share in a vision with your team and they get excited about growth and you're moving in a, in a unified direction. And, and I love it. It's just, it's fantastic. So yeah, there's a really great book by Michael Gerber called the E-Myth. And it talks about how most people start their business and they're at technician level. In other words, they're really good at the thing, but then when you go into business, you have to do all the things. And that's where becoming a uh, business owner, like getting into that entrepreneurial mindset is so key because if you can just do the thing that you started the business to do, right, then you excel, you have fun, you're living in your um, desire zone as Michael Hyatt calls it. And you're able to wake up every day, excited to tackle the projects in front of you because you're able to focus on just the projects that you want to do. When you have virtual assistants on your team that are handling the things that you don't want to do, and they're doing a better job than you, it's a game changer. It really is. And I, this is like one of those big, bold statements that people get on webinars and say, but it really is true. It really changes your life to a better quality of your life when you're able to delegate the day-to-day -day things to other team members, because then you're able to look at your work a different way. It's just, it's not as stressful because you don't have to do everything. You can just focus on the things and managing the people who are doing the things you don't want to do. Um, and then it gives you more time to do the things that you actually enjoy you know, and like for me, you know, we, we, we went on vacation recently and I was able to delegate literally all the day-to-day -day tasks to my team um, and the things that only I can do that they can wait, you know, because my team was handling the day-to-day. -day. So it, it really does improve the quality of your life. It's, I know it's a big, bold statement to make on a webinar, but having a team does improve the quality of your life. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. So Alex, um, you know, I, I know you've got stuff to do, but but tell tell us quickly about Agent CRM and the things that are, are rolling out. And I mean, I get excited every single time I see you roll out new features. So tell me about what's going on with Agent CRM. Yeah, Agent CRM was built initially specifically for insurance agents. That was my niche when we started it. And so we have funnels that are specific for various insurance products. Um, we have workflows, which is, is an industry term for uh, inside of our platform. We have automations that happen based on a trigger. So for example, like one of the things that you can do, <clears throat> excuse me, is you can text in, right? So for those of you who are Medicare agents on the call, you can text the word Medicare to your agent CRM number. And then this workflow, this conversational flow happens based on that specific keyword. It's really cool. I'd love to share with you more about that. Here's what we're rolling out within the next 60 days, which is going to be a game changer. So within Agent CRM, you'll actually be able to um, find leads, specifically business to business to start, but find leads, import them into your CRM system, send them emails and video messages from the CRM, which is crazy. You don't have to leave your CRM to start generating B2B leads. The second thing we're rolling out is you'll be able to launch Facebook ads within Agent CRM. You don't have to learn Facebook Ads Manager. You don't have to figure out how that whole thing works. You don't have to even set up the integration. All you have to do is go into our new tool that we're launching shortly. You can either upload your own images or choose from images that we've created for you. So yeah, if you're an insurance agent on the call, we have ads that are proven to work that you just have to go click. I want to launch this one with a copy that Alex wrote with the targeting that Alex uses. And I want to launch that on my Facebook ads account to the states that I'm licensed in. It's going to be so ridiculously easy and it'll be automatically plugged into agent CRM. So as those leads come in, they'll be plugged into agent CRM. Automations will start happening. You'll be notified when the new leads come in. It's going to be crazy cool. The third thing we're rolling out is a triple line power dialer. So, which has been one of the gaps, I think, in the agent CRM system. We're going at a triple line power dialer. That'll be coming. All three of them will be coming within the next 60 days. They're under development. They're being tested right now. We are super excited about that. So those are the three new things. But even without those things, Agent CRM was seven tools in one. We are so proud of everything that is inside of the Agent CRM platform. We got funnels, email and text message marketing, the complete phone system, and so many more things. It was built for insurance agents. It was designed with the insurance agent in mind so that you could set up systems, make sure that they're good to go, and then let Agent CRM do the work for you. You get one of Tim's virtual assistants to help you with the calls that are coming in and make prospecting calls. You have Agent CRM working 24 seven, doing automation, sifting through leads, all that good stuff. You can focus on just doing the revenue producing activities in your business. Yes, and then one, one last compliment to Alex and then I'll let you go, Alex. His yeah. support oh, you're good. Is, is bar none. I, I, you guys are doing support calls, what is it twice a day? Or every other yeah. day? So we have, so we have live chat within the desktop application. We have somebody that will pick up the phone when you call us and help you work out your problem. We have daily Zoom calls twice a day. Our Facebook group, our, my team scours that Facebook group for any questions that are dropped in there. And our email support, we have people watching emails 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So our support, bar none, is the best in the industry, in my opinion. So I'm biased, but uh, we have invested a ton of time and effort to making sure that our support team are the best trained. They know insurance. Obviously, they know the platform and they are super friendly. They want to see you succeed because we know that if you don't succeed using agent CRM, then you won't keep using it. So our goal is to make sure that for those of you that are looking for software, agent CRM is the choice that you make to try it out. And then you'll meet our team, see all the assets we've got for you, and you'll stick with it. So that's agent CRM in a nutshell. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Alex, for coming on. Very, very much appreciate it. Absolutely. Tim, it was great to have, uh, great to be on here and, and see some old faces. And um, I want to give a, a quick shout out to my man, Joey. I know we've been chatting back and forth over Messenger. It's great to see you. Enjoy the rest of what Joey has to say, you guys. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great night. All right. Bye-bye, Alex. All right, Joey. All right. So let's get back in there. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen one more time with you guys. So I've already introduced myself. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about is the organic side of your marketing strategy. 
And if you're taking notes, I'm going to give you basically the entire outline to how to, how to outdo your competition on the organic side. Now, this should be 20% of your effort. Uh, 80%, as Tim said, and especially in the first five years, should be spent on actual advertising with ad spend. Or, you know, if you are buying leads, that's where you put your money. But for this 20%, the strategy I'm going to show you, uh, it's just going to take an hour to an hour and a half per week for you, as long as you do have a VA or a team of VAs. So there's not a whole lot of time you have to invest, but you're going to get a ton out of it. Uh, Tim, is my screen good to go here? Hopefully it is. All right, guys. If, if anybody can't see the screen, speak up. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is marketing versus advertising. The terms are used uh, interchangeably, but there is a difference. Your marketing is your content. Your marketing is your YouTube videos, your podcast, your blog, what you post on Facebook. That is marketing. Advertising is how you spend money to let people see your marketing. So it's Facebook ads, it's Google ads, it's TikTok ads, whatever the case may be. Your advertising is where you put your money and your marketing is what you're actually letting people see about your business. Now, a lot of people say, well, I'm not a content creator. I can't create content. I'm not comfortable in front of a camera, et cetera. Well, there's three ways to do it. All three ways are effective, but you do have to target people through one of these three methods if you're going to be an authority in your space on the internet. The first way is if you are a good writer, you can write a weekly blog. Your blog can then be turned into audio and video, and it can be distributed throughout the different channels. If you are comfortable on camera, the most engaging way to do it, of course, is to be a, to do a, a video episode, like a YouTube episode. Spend an hour or an hour and a half in front of the camera just once per week, like a Saturday morning or something, and you'll have all the content you need to fill up the entire week nonstop on every platform. The third option would be maybe you're comfortable presenting and speaking, but the camera's just not really your place. Well, then a podcast would be a perfect thing for you. You can record it quite literally from your phone uh, while you're driving, no matter what you're doing. Talk for that hour, hour and a half. If you can't lead the conversation that long, have somebody interview you and do an interview style podcast. Same thing with the YouTube video, by the way. Either way, though, people learn in three ways. They're either audible learners and they're going to learn from hearing you. They're visual learners. They're going to learn from watching your videos or they, they will learn from reading or hands on something like that. So they're going to learn from your blog post, your Facebook post, your LinkedIn post. So you have to hit people in all three ways to make sure that you get the maximum potential of your audience because we're all different. Now, what I call this is the one hour method. Uh, this is something I came up through my own personal experience, as well as some really extensive training that I've taken over the years. And step number one is you're going to pick a topic that your audience enjoys learning about. Now, it doesn't have to be about the product you sell. I'm going to give you an illustration. If you're a life insurance agent, you don't necessarily have to talk specifically about life insurance and people buying life insurance from you. What you want to do is you want to research your topic. There's three ways to research that are really effective. Reddit, Cura, if I'm saying that right, and YouTube. Get on these three platforms and find out what the most common questions people have are. I promise you, no matter what you're talking about, it's going to be on these three platforms. Once you've identified those three, uh, those common problems that people ask, you need to ask yourself, how can my services solve the consumer's most common problems, their common questions? And that's what you want your content to be about. So for instance, if it's life insurance, maybe the number one search term, and I don't know if this is true, is how much does a funeral cost in 2022? Well, what you wanna do is focus your content on how much does a funeral cost? Let them know you're a life insurance agent, that you provide life insurance, but in the world of 2022, in this consumer world where we're, we're really devourers of content, the sales process is not in the content creation. The sales process is when you get them on the phone, you get them on Zoom, or you see them face-to-face. -face. The one thing most people do wrong when they make content online is they try to sell the consumer. Don't sell your consumer. You want them to like you, you want them to get to know you, and you want them to learn from you. So you gotta keep it educational. 
So again, 60 to 90 minute video. I'm just going to use the video as an example here, but it could be a blog. It could be audio. Once weekly, discussing your said product or solution. Don't sell them. Keep it informative and educational. Upload your recording to a service like Dropbox and let your VA know that you've got it there. Sit back, relax, and let your VA deliver unlimited content to your audience. And I do mean unlimited. There's so much content that can be made from your 60 to 90 minutes of effort. It's insane. But what if you don't have a VA yet? Well, I hope you get one after watching this webinar and you see the value. But I am going to give you the steps that you would take to produce the same results that I would produce with a VA. So doing it without a VA, you would need to create an intro and exit recording using a video editor. You could also opt to pay for this service from a website like Fiverr. Fiverr works really well. There's independent contractors you can toss 20, 30, $50 to, and they'll make something really beautiful for you. Break your recordings down into eight to 10 minute segments. You wanna do eight to 10 minutes minimum when you're uploading to anything like YouTube. There's a very specific reason for this. YouTube makes their money on advertisements, not on your content. They show people's ads in your videos. We all see them. We all deal with them. And they won't put an ad in a video that's less than eight minutes. So what that means is when YouTube's algorithm is figuring out whose content do I want to boost, they're going to go with the content that's long enough to monetize. So you want the algorithm to see your content as potential for making YouTube money. So you have to do a minimum of eight minute segments. I don't recommend uploading the entire thing in one video. Humans have a very short attention span these days. So break it into segments and that's also gonna give you more content to produce. You're gonna add your intro and exit footage. Canva is a great tool for this. You'd be surprised. You don't have to have Camtasia. Uh, it actually does a really good job with video and upload your series to YouTube. One or two videos per day over the course of the week is more than enough. You should get five or six videos each week out of your recording. Now we're gonna do uh, the appropriate tags for YouTube. This is super important. Your tags are what track where and who see your content. Now there are tools you can use that are free. So again, if you're taking notes, uh, Social Blade is one I use, it's very helpful. You can actually download that, plug it into your browser and see your competition's tags. And that's gonna really help boost your chances of the right people seeing your content. Once this is done, you're gonna pull the audio from your video series. And you're gonna use a service like Anchor where you can host podcasts and schedule it to be published twice a week as plenty as podcast episodes. Now you've taken one one hour activity and you've got several YouTube videos and several podcast episodes right out the gate. Now we're gonna take it further and we're gonna transcribe these episodes. Rev.com is a good service that can take your audio and turn it into text. And then I would optimize it for SEO using something like Jasper AI. The average person speaks roughly 150 words per minute. So you should have based on the one hour minimum somewhere between 8,000 and 10,000 words from your recording. It's crazy how much we talk. Break these down into 1,500 to 2,500 word sections for blog posting. And again, optimize, optimize, optimize. That way Google shows your articles to more people. Now we're gonna look at short form video. So take those YouTube segments and identify 30 second to three minute highlights that can be pulled for content. You're gonna use the 30 second clips on Facebook and Instagram as reels. And the three minute to five minute, really you can go a little bit longer, clips will be perfect for TikTok. A lot of people don't know this, but TikTok, TikTok is competing with YouTube these days. And they're favoring long form content. That's why they just increased your, your ability to post a video up to 10 minutes. The younger generation uses TikTok just like we have used YouTube. You search how to change the oil on a Chevy Suburban on YouTube, and you watch that and you learn, well, these kids are doing the same thing with TikTok and they know that and they're capitalizing on that. So the longer videos always go to TikTok. We're gonna take these same highlights and we're gonna make them short articles for Facebook and LinkedIn. So when I say short articles, what I mean is you've got your blog posts, you've got your TikTok videos, you've got your YouTube. You're gonna pull four or five paragraphs, turn it into text form, 
and post it on Facebook and LinkedIn because those are the two places that like this long form content. It's really important though that you always link these posts back to your blog. That's what's called a backlink and that really helps with search engine optimization. And you're gonna do this regularly. You should be able to pull out at least two or three per recording. So that's gonna cover your content for two or three days right off the bat for Facebook and LinkedIn. And, and the backlinks are surprisingly effective at increasing your visibility on Google. Now we're gonna identify one-liners. So when you, when you go through these recordings, what you're gonna find is you're gonna find quotes that are strong enough to stand on their own. I've heard plenty of them just in this webinar. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put those quotes with a picture. It's even better if it's branded with your image, but if not, a, a generic picture works fine too, just like you see here on the right. And you're gonna always tag your business. So your business needs to have, like you see my at Joey Turner official, you need to have something that's constant across all, all platforms for your brand. And you always wanna put that tag in the image. The reason being is when you do these little quotes and people like them and they share them, they may save them to their phone and repost them on their own personal profile. They may send them through a text message, but you always want people to see where it comes from and be able to follow it back to the source. So that's really, really important. You can then take these same picture quotes, put a little bit of music to them and make them 30 second clips for your Facebook story, your Instagram story. The possibilities are really endless. Next, you're gonna maximize uh, your, your audience engagement. Now that we've used your original video and we've broken it down into blogs, TikToks, reels, stories, uh, podcast episodes, we're gonna also add in the occasional engagement posts and the personal posts work really well here. I've got an example for you of, uh, say you go out to a Mexican restaurant with your family and you take a picture of your food. Now, hopefully you don't eat the food first because that doesn't make a very good picture, uh, but you simply post, dinner with my loved ones, red sauce or green sauce on your enchiladas. You're asking your audience a question that has nothing to do with sales, has nothing to do with your brand, but they're gonna engage with you. I'm say, I like red sauce, I like green sauce, I like cheese, I like whatever. They're gonna like it, they're, they're gonna comment on it. A lot of these really simple posts, and I know you've seen them, end up going viral on Facebook and having hundreds of comments because everyone loves to have an opinion. Well, what this does for your page is it skyrockets your chances with the algorithm because what Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram look for is they look for engagement. When they see that people are engaged with your, with your brand, they send more traffic to you organically. And that's ultimately our goal here is to create as much organic traffic as possible. Now, if you follow the system, one hour per week, 90 minutes if you can, it's even better. This is what you can expect to have. 250 to 300 YouTube videos and podcast episodes, 180 plus blog posts and long form social media posts, over 500 TikTok videos and Instagram reels, and thousands of quote posts, Facebook, Instagram stories, and you sprinkle in the personal posts. And I'm telling you, you're gonna be posting two or three times a day, every single day, without any effort on your part with the VA. Now, let me ask you guys this. How many of your competitors are producing this level of content? How many of your competitors are putting this out every year? Almost nobody does this, and it's so simple to do. All you have to do is have a VA that's trained on how to do these organic marketing methods, how to write good copy, how to do the, the very simple image editing with a software like Canva, and then some kind of software to keep them organized. It's very simple, guys. How long does it take to build an audience? Well, it's likely gonna take four to six months to, to begin developing a really loyal following of fans. Everybody wants to go viral, but viral is not what you want in your business. You want a fan base that loves you, comments on your posts, shares your, your posts with their friends, and comes back every time they get a notification that you've posted something new. Some of them are gonna come for your blog, some for your YouTube channel, some for your TikTok, and some for your podcast. They'll all have unique listeners. Once you reach 10,000 followers or more, you can begin to do advanced strategies like Facebook groups. You can really capitalize on live events. You could publish a book. There's so many things you can do with an audience that you can't do when nobody knows who you are. Now, during that four to six months, I don't want you to starve to death. 
the whole point is that this is 20% of your effort. That's why it's one hour per day. So you still use the advertising. And what you do is you're going to boost your most popular posts. You're going to put your money with the posts that go viral, the posts that do really well. And it's, it's counteractive to what people think. You don't want to post, uh, you don't want to put money behind the posts that do poorly. You actually want to put your money with the posts that do their best. Because if it's already getting good in engagement organically, it's going to get amazing engagement when you put it in, 20, in front of 2,500, 3,000 people with five or 10 bucks. So a few takeaways, always promote your best performing content. Reach out to other influencers that serve your audience, but not necessarily are in your industry. A perfect example is if you sell final expense insurance, find an estate planner that has a small to medium sized audience online and collaborate, build together and look for other examples like that. If you're an annuity person, maybe you look for the, the um, RIAs, right? Uh, you want to build relationships and you want them to come on your show. You want to go on their show. And, and again, I'm talking about the little work on the weekends, because what you're going to do is you're going to spread your audience together and you're going to unify and you've got a really good chance of bringing in people who would have never known you before. Publish your best blog post to the media. A lot of people don't realize you can actually get your posts as long as they're neutral and you're not selling published with your local news companies like Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS. And when you have that on your website, the as seen on ABC, NBC, Fox, CBS, et cetera, that goes miles for your credibility. Your social proof will be through the roof when new customers come to your website. Aim to speak on as many podcasts and as many events as possible. It's all about building your credibility. Every activity that you do is a potential content for your marketing strategy. And I want you to remember that. Uh, ensure you have a centralized place for your followers to connect. A good example is Linktree. Uh, if you have the right software, you can build your own version of Linktree like me and Tim have done. But you want to have all of your links, your social media, your websites, your calendar to book an appointment with you in one place. That way, when you do put your, your content out, you can drive everybody to one centralized location. And that's where sales funnels come in. You really want to have a clear process for people to be able to take action on your products and services when they choose to do so. You put out enough organic content and educational content to draw them in. When they do come in, that's where your copywriting and your sales funnels and your overall sales process become super important because you want to guide them through, hold their hand, and lead them to where you want them to go. Uh, automation, Tim's already mentioned. Um, Jasper AI is wonderful. Having a booking bot is wonderful. Having a system, uh, uh, you know, intelligence, artificial intelligence that can communicate with your prospects, automatically book the appointments for you. But then also having that virtual assistant to come behind when they don't know what's going on and say, okay, the AI didn't understand this. Let me jump in here. I've got all these pre-programmed responses. No, none of these fit. Okay. Let me call my agent. Let me text my agent. What do I say to this customer who just contacted me on Facebook? These are the systems you need in place if you're going to take your agency from six figures to seven to eight, however big you want to grow. These are the systems that are going to save you tons of money and really elevate you to the next level with very minimal time invested and not that much money, honestly. So uh, contact information is here. If anybody wants to reach out to me, you're more than welcome to. Uh, I'm the CMO at A-Setters, and I'd love to talk to you about strategy anytime. Uh, but with that, I'm going to hand it back to Tim, and uh, we'll wrap this webinar up. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. All right. Great job, Joey. Love it. Great, great, great content. You know, I've known Joey for how long have we known each other, Joey? Almost two years? About two years, yeah. Yeah. Joey, Joey is a smart cookie. I mean, <laughs> you're a smart cookie, man, and I'm so blessed to have you uh, on 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 the A Setters team. So, um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to open it up for a Q and A right now. Um, I know that there's a couple people that have raised their hands, so you guys should all be allowed to speak, I believe. And hold on, let me. Um, yeah. So, uh, if you have any questions for us, please fire away. What I am going to say is, um, oh, we got two hands up. 
What I'm going to say is after this uh, webinar, we're going to send out a email and text message. You'll have the opportunity if you want to purchase the appointment setting program, you can. If you don't, if you want to book a call and pick our brains further, we're more than happy to do that. And if you don't want to do either of those things, you can just walk away, you know, with a little bit more understanding of VAs. So um, let's go. We're going to do it based off of raising hands. I think Charles White uh, was the first person to raise their hand. So Charles, could you unmute yourself and, and fire away? Hold on. Has to unmute. Maybe he raised his hand and forgot. Charles, are you there? All right, we're gonna move on to Scott Zip. Scott Zip. Hey, what's up? Uh, we had spoken, um, you know, earlier and stuff like that. When I get this VA, listen, you know, driving revenue is going to lead to the second one and third one. So what I'd like to ask is if my VA can just be sent, just do a couple of things. That's all I need them to do. Like upload the lead CSV and to um, agent CRM and mm -hmm. then start calling and make appointments. hundred percent. Right there. So that's all I need. And then, you know, when she, when she, when the appointment no shows, we just, you know, move it into no show. And then the, uh, the VA can then call them back and reschedule the appointment. That way I can keep the team in the field. Does that make sense at all? Yep. A hundred percent. Absolutely. We can do that. You, and we also have, our VAs are also cross-trained to respond to text messages as well. So yeah, I didn't. I, I need that all that, that phone and the voice and non-voice appointment and appointment setting, you know, so if when something comes into the CRM, then it's responded to. And that way I, I can't just sit and stare at the screen and it's AEP right now. And Walmart killed me today. Uh, <laughs> so I, I got, I want to get it done. I just, does this, I'm hoping this makes sense to everybody. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, Scott. Absolutely. Yes, we can do all of those things and more. Um, so Scott, I'll, uh, I'll send, you'll get a book of time with us and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get you set up. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Do we have any other questions? If you, if you're too shy to, um, to uh, speak out loud, you can, you can type them in the chat. Oh, wait, we have here. a few setting in the Q and A. We do. Uh, well, that was Scott call my Medicare leads. Absolutely. Um, and then we have one from Advisor Hub Pro. They're having a hard time accessing the webinar. Uh, had to VPN the US. I have no idea. Uh, Scott Sims. Scott Sims. Hey, hey Tim. Hey, hey, what's um, hey, what's up, man? Um, hey, good, good webinar. Um, I, I purchased uh, Samson, which is, uh, you know, our boys over there at, uh, well, I won't mention them. <laughs> but you can I, go ahead. <laughs> I, I have I have a I have a go high level type account. Yes. All right. And it's, and it's the Samson. Um, it's not really loaded up for quite as many automations and things. Um, I know this may sound like a silly question, but would you would you recommend like paying the whatever Alex offers 47 bucks a month to like have it loaded with all the automations and all the follow up and what it, you know, whatever his comes with? I'm, I, that's a personal question probably, but I just wanted to throw it out there, see what your thought was. So, so you're, so if Alex would load the snapshot into Samsung or the other way around? Cor correct. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out, like, I would want to get it. I, I don't want to build all these automations out, right? Like, I'm not yeah. trying to, to figure all that out. Like, would it make sense to almost purchase his and, and pay the money per month? Is it that worth it? Um, uh, I mean, well, the, the automations are pre-built out. I, I think his is 50 a month. I would say, yeah, but let's, Scott, let's hop on a call and, and we'll, we can, we can, um, we can uh, problem solve this. So, so regardless, whether it's, you know, with Alex, whether you guys have a CRM or don't have a CRM, um, you know, you're, you're talking to two people that are, are experts with automation, right? So we can make sure that we, we have a, a solution to any problem. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah. I just 
I, I don't want to create more work and I just I just want to keep it easy. So 50 bucks a month and solve that problem. I'm almost willing to do that. But hey, you and I will talk. Maybe we can figure out something else too. Absolutely. Love it, Scott. All right, we got uh Albert. Yes, sir. How Thank are you, you. Mr. Mr. Sosa? Doing great. Uh, great webinar. I picked up a lot from it. Um, I usually do when I watch your webinars. <laughs> um, I do want to get with you to start a uh, the Facebook uh, ad campaign. So if we could talk or give me a call later this week, that would be great. Absolutely. Facebook, Facebook campaign. Yeah, absolutely. And we were uh, ACA, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the our ACA ads are doing really, really well right now. So anyone else that that is uh, interested in ACA, ACA, I think Justin Crosby is using it and he's doing a good job. So um, yeah, we, we have that. So uh, just book a time with me on the calendar and we'll, we'll get everything set up and uh, a rocking and a rolling, okay? I can definitely, I don't know if everyone wants to hear me, I can definitely vouch for Tim on that. He does a fantastic job with it. He's actually helped me to grow and scale my ACA business. Um, just because I've gotten it. So yeah, if, if anyone is interested in getting set up and, and starting to grow and scale their ACA business, please talk to Tim. He'll get you, he'll get you hooked up. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the plug, Justin. Love it. All right. We got Larry Spencer. How are you doing, Larry? Oh, hold on. Ask to unmute. Unmute. Am I unmuted? Yep. Hey, Larry. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, friend? Good. I, I'm i very interested in everybody, you and everybody I saw. I'd like to uh, have a conference with you and see how I can integrate this and tell you a little bit about what I do and how I do it and uh, uh, go from there, get a, get a plan together. Absolutely. Yes. You so, guys all, all get a, a time to book with us. So we would be more than happy to help. We can support okay. basically anything. We do lead gen, appointment setting, automation builds, uh, anything you can think of on the marketing or tech end, we can help. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So, hey, Larry, Larry, I know your name. How do I know you? My pick, my poster used to be up in the post office. No, what? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <I> was... <laughs> no, I don't know. I where do you live? I'm in Greenville. Were, were you ever a part of? Uh, did you know Magikai? No. No. Okay. No. Maybe I'm, no. I'm thinking of someone differently. Yeah. But, uh, okay. All right. Awesome, Larry. Well, I look forward to speaking with you. Okay. So I, you're going to send me a calendar, and I'm going to put the time. Yep, everyone here will get a chance to book a time with us this week. Okay. okay. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate this whole thing. Hey, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. you for attending. Okay. okay. All right. It looks like um, Rich Warren has a question. No, no, Rich. Anyone else have any questions? Oh, there's Rich. He raised his hand and then he unraised it. Nope. Peter Green? Hey, Tim. Right. How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing, Peter? Pretty good. Pretty good. Awesome stuff, man. Um, as usual, you guys are putting out a lot of good content, a lot of good information. And I, I can tell you that I've worked with Tim uh, for just over a year now. And Tim has been great, uh, very innovative, a very great product. So if anyone is out there is concerned or interested, don't hesitate. Get on board with Tim. He's a great, an awesome guy. Help you to get your marketing, help you get your business growing. Oh, thank you, Peter. Man, I'm just going to walk away from this webinar with a huge head. So I'm, I'm just I'm just happy, you know. Very, very egocentric man over here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to open it up, uh, you know, going once, going twice. If you have a question, either unmute yourself or um, or raise your hand. And 
Doesn't look like anyone is. So I think I'm going to end the webinar. You guys, like I said, you all get a uh, an invite to speak with us. If you want to go ahead and and uh, you know get some callers or appointment setters, you'll have that link as well. So you have the the choice. Um, Joey, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, one thing, Tim. It looks like did we speak with Charles White? Because I see his hand up on my end. Uh, his hand has been up for a while, and I tried to. Oh, did he? Oh, no, he, he unraised his hand. I think he accidentally raised his hand or he changed oh, okay. it. So, um, so anyhow, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys attending. Uh, wait, no, <laughs> someone's messing with me. Rich is messing with me. Uh, I appreciate you guys attending and um, I look forward to speaking with you guys. I hope we can do business together. Thank you guys.